Hey everybody, Rex Bear Leak Project. What you are looking at right here is an infrared view of Saturn's moon, Titan. The largest moon of Saturn, also one of the most incredible in my opinion. And I wonder if the Titans that are discussed in Greek mythology, the Elder Gods, if they might have actually came from Titan. And when you hear about the size of these beans and the possibilities, and then you get into mud fossils and other scenarios, the possibilities are just literally almost so far out there and fringe, you immediately want to shut down and say, no, there's no way. Yet when you read about the Nephilim, and if you want to believe the translation that says they were up to 4,500 feet in size, now, I've read three different translations. I've read 4,500 feet, 450 feet, and 400 feet. So that is based on the measurements in the specific book of Enoch, where it talks about the amount of uh, shells, essentially, or a specific measurement that is about 18 inches times that by uh, 3,000, you've got essentially 4,500 feet. So... That is, literally, you think about that, and you're like, no way. That's got to be impossible. And I had a show last night with a guest that's been studying Enochian magic and also remote viewing heavily. He used to get paid as a remote viewer. He was paid for two years as a remote viewer for a private company in the late 90s. And he talks about his experiences and how to actually do it and how he does it. It's Incredible. It's like cataloging of the mind. You should listen to the podcast. It's on the exclusive section for premium members on leakproject.com. It just got uploaded. So if you're a premium member, you'll have access to that. I definitely recommend listening to it. It's a great interview. He also puts out a map of the universe of the ethereal, the ethereal universe, the astral realms. It's amazing in the way that he shows you how to move through consciousness and the, the dots that he connected was fantastic, especially I feel like synchronicities happen sometimes when you will learn about something and then meet somebody shortly after that's talking about things that you were researching and connecting the dots. But let's get back to Titan and the atmosphere being different, the gravity being different. If beings came from Titan to Earth, then maybe they were looked at as gods because they had so much more strength and power and abilities based on the way that their molecular structure was made on another planet, or as we call a moon, Titan, which is about the size of Earth, just so you guys know. And here's an image of Earth. And the one thing I've noticed about coloring is you have to be real careful when you speculate that something's CGI just because of the coloring of it. A lot of times, with astrophotography especially, there's so much involved. There's stacking, there's different layers you have to put together and color formats and stuff. And I don't really know enough about it to get into detail. I know enough about it to know that it's extremely difficult to be very good at it. And it's an industry in and of itself that you can go to school for. So you look at this image right here and then these ones that show all different NASA images as far back as 72. And he, this person kind of pokes a joke. Come on, NASA, make your mind up. What does the earth really look like? Well, that's a great question. I mean, it certainly looks like now in 2015, there's there's a lot more haze, a lot more. But then you go back to the 70, 1972 image, and it looks kind of hazy there, yet it doesn't look as silverish, in my opinion. It's a little bit more darker blue. But then look at 2007. That's a very weird model right there. This is from nasa.gov, saturn.jpl.nasa.gov, slash science, slash titan. This also piqued my interest underground ocean the gravity measurements of titan revealed that the moon is hiding an internal liquid water and ammonia ocean beneath its surface uh, the measurements the radio signals also suggest an ocean 35 to 50 miles below the moon's surface this discovery of a global ocean of liquid water adds titan to the handful of worlds in our solar system that could potentially contain life Now, the atmosphere of Earth, because I looked at the atmosphere of Titan, and it has nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Well, so does Earth. See right there. 78% nitrogen, 0.04% carbon dioxide. 
Now you get into the real fun stuff here where the mythology of the Titans, they were the elder gods. And let's look at some of the, let me, this is a great article from Greek slash gods dot org slash Titans. I will leave a link in the video description box. Let me read this to you. The Titans, the mighty Titans were a powerful race that ruled the world before Olympians. In a time of the golden age of man, they were immortal gods of incredible strength and knowledge of old religion, rituals, and magic. They are also known as the elder gods. And their dwelling place was at Mount Orthus. In Greek culture, they were interpreted as personifications of the earth, Gaia, and the sky of heavens. Uranus, the first generation of Titans, were descendants of Gaia and Uranus, who originally gave birth to the twelve Titans, six males, six females. The males were Coeus, Cronos, Crius, Hyperion, Iapetus, and Oceanus. And the females, I'm not even going to pronounce the first one, second one, Phobe, Rhea, Thea, Themis, and Tethys, they arose to power when Cronos, in a plot with his mother and his brothers, castrated his father Uranus and took the rulership of Cosmos from him. More details about the conflict can be found in the Genesis. During the reign, some brothers and sisters consorted with each other while others consorted with sons and daughters of their relatives and gave birth to the second generation of Titans. Hyperion and Thea gave birth to Eos, Helios, and Selene, while Coeus and Phobe brought forth Leto and Asteria, Oceanus and Tethys gave birth to Oceanidas and Potamoi, who are in general not referred as Titans, however, and Oceanid Clamine, a daughter of Oceanus and Tethys helped Iapetus to continue the next generation and bore him Atlas, Prometheus, Epimetheus, and Minotius, Creus and his half-sister, Eurbea, a daughter of Gaia, and Pontus brought forth Astraeus, Pallas, and Perses, and eventually Cronos and Rhea gave birth to younger gods Zeus, Hades, Poseidon, Hera, Hestia, and Demeter, who rebelled against Cronos and his followers and later defeated them in a ten-year war known as Titanomachy. Uh, Sorry, Titanomachy. They called themselves the Olympian gods after Mount Olympus, which was their main dwelling place and became the new rulers of Cosmos, which included Earth. Gaia, the world most known to Greeks. So, that's interesting because a lot of those names are linked to the moons of Saturn. And this to me sounds like the beginning of time, in essence, such as these planets and how they were created and the, the destruction of planets, the maybe transfer of consciousness. If you study astro... Shamanism, I've got a great book on astro shamanism where it actually helps you learn how to tap into the archetypes and the consciousness of different planets and stars and alignments and vibrational frequencies. And I feel that that statement, as above, so below, has a lot more meaning than many people feel. Maybe each moon, each star, each planet has, in essence, a representation of thy lower self, thy physical form and body as well, the epitome that could connect the heavens and the lowerly realms, all in the midpoint. It gets very metaphysical, and if you really get into the quantum entanglement, the sacred geometry, the, vib the vibrational patterns and frequencies, I do feel that the entonement of human bodies or beings are a part of specific entities. When you hear the saying, every soul, every man and woman is a star, 
there could be a lot more truth to that. And being that star, that could be your higher self, a higher level of consciousness once you've obtained what you need to through these different levels of reality that we go through. You know, it's like boot camp. We're talking about this dualistic world right now on planet Earth, and you see all these different symbols that represent the sun. I want to talk about that for a minute. Think about all the different symbols that you see on banks and, and credit unions that have a symbol that represents the sun. Go back hundreds of thousands of years. Even some of these cave paintings have representations of the sun. And many aristocratic courtyards and churches and, and even the Vatican and stuff, they, a lot of them have areas that will connect to the sun. And... Some people look at that as evil, yet I don't think that's evil at all because it depends on how you look at the sun. I mean, even if you believe in Jesus Christ, the sun, the sun, it's an O and a U, it's the, it's the way to the light. So maybe the sun in our solar system is some type of stargate, and the stories of Jesus and Toth and others that talk about the you know the only way to heaven is through me maybe that's more symbolic of a certain pathway a stargate in essence and to get through that you have to be of a certain vibrational frequency a specific level otherwise you're just going to be too dense to get to that next level i think that's a good possibility also so with that said you look at some of these planets like Saturn that have the rings around it that some people feel are an imprisonment of sorts, and that will have a connection on us as well because it is a part of the galactic, you know, it's a part of the universe. Everything is connected to everything else, and those rings have a certain harmonious effect on our everyday lives, I feel. Now, whether or not that's going to affect us to the point to where we can't buy a cup of coffee, ob coffee, obviously not. We can still go buy a cup of coffee. I just wonder what the... I don't know why I use that terminology. I'm, I'm just trying to look at the practical aspects of it and the, the aspects that most of us don't see. You know, when you get into the cult of Saturn and the cube and the imprisonment of the soul, the soul cubes that we've talked about. And we'll get into that more here in a future podcast. But this one, I just want to stick with Titan and the Titans and the Elder Gods. So with these names, if you connect them to the Sumerian stuff, then you can say that these Titan Gods came before the, the Sumerians kings list then. And then also I want to talk a little bit more about that interview that I had that's available on leakproject.com for premium members. And it was great because Damien had a really good way of explaining specific vibrational patterns and frequencies. And he also talked about his most wild remote viewing experience that he had that was essentially seeing giants, like giants that were so big, so enormous that some of the mountains that we see today are actually remnants of these giant mountains. Now, if you read, if you read these, if you read this mythos of these giants that came here, and if you want to possibly think about the 4,500 foot Nephilim, and then he also talked about the Watchers, which very interesting take on the Watchers. And he said the calls of Enoch are okay. The calls of the Watchers, he he doesn't agree with and I asked him about that he also describes the call to watchers so I know a lot of people when he when you talk about giants being so big that it could be a mountain like me also I, I shut off you know like there was a part of my mind that just automatically shut off but the more he started talking about it and the more he started describing things and the more you get into mud fossils and then I started thinking about these moon rocks that were brought back that were sliced into really thin pieces and put underneath microscopes. And they looked like fossilized brain neurons and stuff. It's just real bizarre. So, you know, but then I asked, hey, so what are you saying? The Rocky Mountains are giants that were fossilized? He says, no, there's just certain areas of red rock in certain locations that look like literally fossilized blood and fossilized beans. So still, that's far out there even for myself and for himself. He said, hey, that's far out there for me too. It was a remote viewing session. You know, it wasn't like he saw it with his own eyes. Remote viewing is completely different. Yet, it's a possibility, right? Or is it a possibility? I mean, my goodness, we could be living in a simulation right now anyway. So what isn't a possibility? Question everything. That's my motto. And until you have all the answers, keep looking. And you'll probably be looking for a long time. Be the change you want to see, folks. Leakproject.com.